Перелекция. Володь, а ты отключи видео, микрофон. И кушай. Да. Я, я боюсь, я боюсь, что я тогда конвы про проем. Ничего. Ничего, ничего. Саша, ты, ты, ты уже выучил? Саш, ты уже выучил про полином в конце или нет еще? Нет, еще не выучил. Я тебе все никак не пришлю, а надо прислать. А -а -а. Ты это говорил, да, как они да, связаны? Ты, ты говорил, но я не, не, не помню деталей. Пришли, пожалуйста. Ну да, я послушаю сегодня, потом пришлю. Угу, угу. А, кстати, начальник появился, знаете, Михаил Шапиров. По -моему, вот я не знаю, вот, здравствуйте, меня зовут Вовик Худовердян. Отлично. Да. Саш. Да, Миш. Мы вас записываем. Да? Записываем. Понятно, что делать. Бывает. Эм, ну что? Сколько у меня, Миш, чтобы это самое, когда мне отключат микрофон, знать? Ну, час, мы предупредим. У нас дебаты час. Понятно. Дебаты включаются в час? Ну, посмотрим. Нет, ну, на самом деле, больше. Так что так, свободно, по желанию. Смотри, Миш, значит, я скрин хочу сделать. Это можно? Да, 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 извиняюсь, да. Сейчас. Я нажму, да? Или это а, как? Все, да, я все. Я. Нажать, да? Шерст скрин, все, да. Держи а. тут. Я а. сейчас. А вероятно, это старт? Я ну, нет. Just a second. Миш, а сейчас. Что же у меня? Я не могу почему-то. Еще э -э скрин сделать. Да нет, я, я, я разрешил. Ты разрешил, да? А, а ничего не видно сейчас, нет? Нет. Нет, да? Так, подожди. А, так, еще скрин, допустим, да? А где он у меня тут? Зеленая такая, внизу кнопка. Там вроде Альтес написано нажать еще можно. А? Альтес? Ну да. Сейчас, а почему он у меня не... Секунду. Секунду, секунду. Саша, вы видите такую зеленую кнопку внизу? Я вижу, я, но, но когда я на нее нажимаю, у меня получается какая-то какую-то ерунду. Я вижу типа себя. И нет, нет, сейчас, э, Миш, тебя вижу еще. Лунч. Whiteboard. А почему он не показывает? А, ну, если whiteboard. Whiteboard, что ли, да? Ну. No. Айфон. Вот, все, да, прекрасно. Нет, понимаешь, нет, 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 не прекрасно. Я хотел пиде в своем смысле слайды показывать. А слайды как сделать? А, сейчас скажу. Значит, нужно выбрать вот этот десктоп, а потом... Выбрать в начале десктоп, что да, ну вот share screen, потом десктоп, а потом там просто на экране показывать. То, что ты будешь показывать на экране, то и будет. Во, все. Сейчас. Вот слайды сейчас. Слайды сейчас, да? Сейчас, ну, нужно мне full screen что ли, сделать. Да. View full screen mode. О, пойдет так? Да, прекрасно, да. Sorry, well, да. Я как это объявлю главный номер нашей программы. <laughs> ah. uh, hi everybody, we are ready to start. Today we will have Alexander Veselov, who will speak about variation of Antonio and Markov themes. And uh, next week we uh, I think, yeah, we will have Sergey Shadrin, 
and week after that, uh, Tamoki Nakanishi agreed to give the talk. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that everybody get a link to website where, where all this information is summarized. Okay, Sasha, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the talk is actually uh, uh, quite um, elementary, uh, but I think it's there are a few um, uh, uh, important uh, points. Maybe not everybody. Uh, uh, no, but uh, I think it's worthy for, for everybody uh, uh, to uh, be familiar with. So, um, um, right, so the plan is I will talk about convey topograph, then about Markov equation, and then about um, um, what we did with Katie Spalding um, about um, uh, growth on. Uh, uh, convey topograph for various things, for Markov numbers, for uh, quadratic forms, and uh, for other other things as well. And um, mm, so these are the references. So let me start um, uh, straight with uh, uh, with um, two main heroes. So this is uh, Andrei Andreevich Markov. Um, and uh, John Conway. So um, it's um, two remarkable mathematicians. And uh, let me not talk much about this, although I mean they are very in interesting, not just mathematician, but uh, very interesting as personalities. But uh, let me skip this. So uh, it's interesting that what I didn't realize, and probably. Uh, not many people realize that um, the origin of their interest uh, in, in the part of research is uh, going, uh, it's the same. It's just the question about what is the best way to pack spheres. In, in, uh, so this is a subject which is um, mm, uh, mm, Korkin and Zolotaryov, who were uh, students of Chebyshev and supervisor for Markov they were interested in. And uh, Gorkin and Zolotaryov solved the problem of uh, densest lattice uh, sphere packing in dimension, I think, four and uh, five, right? Now, Conveys was also for many years interested in, in, in um, uh, this topic. And uh, he has a book with Sloan on this uh, uh, famous one, but I don't think that uh, at least judging from what I uh, uh, saw so far that um, mm, uh, he um, uh, considered Markov as uh, part of the same story. Now, the, the, uh, one of the um, uh, thing I, I was, I couldn't understand how uh, irresponsible uh, supervisor should be to give to a student this kind of problem. But then when I learned about this relation with lattice sphere packing, I, I realized that the idea was very simple. So in dimension two, sphere packing is very simple indeed. So let's do the following. Let's ask the same question for indefinite binary quadratic form. And this is the question I think they asked and they thought that it probably they mean, anyway, uh, the answer turned out to be beautiful, highly non-trivial, and uh, so fascinating that people, I think, still coming back to this, and this is, I, I, I'm going to talk about uh, this a bit later. Let me start with Conway. Conway, I should say that many, many stuff, uh, I, uh, of this stuff about this, you know, Conway topograph, I learned from, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, Leonie Chekhov from Volodya Folk, but none of them, of course, pretended uh, that they invented this, and I was puzzled who was uh, uh, the person, because it was clear that topography is very, very important uh, technical tool, right? And uh, so I was very happy when I found this book, which is, uh, uh, can you see this, by the way, uh, also? I mean, the book. Well, anyway, this is Essential Quadratic Form by John Conway, right? And this is um, uh, just, uh, it's a lectures. 
he has given in um, in uh, uh, 1991, and uh, at the preface, he's in uh, he's saying this is joint meetings of uh, uh, American Mathematical Society and Mathematical Association of America. Um, so I have been interested in quadratic form for many years, but keep on discovering new and simple ways to understand them. The topograph uh, in the uh, quotation marks of the first lecture makes the entire theory of binary quadratic form so easy that we no longer need to think or prove theorem about this form. Just look. In some sense, the experts already knew something like this picture. But why didn't use it uh, only in, in analytic theory rather than right from the start? And then he, uh, when he talking about uh, the content of the book, he said that the topograph of the first lecture is new, right? I mean, so at least for Conway, and he is the, the person who uh, appreciated a simple important thing. I mean, he uh, thought that this is important to emphasize. And the first lecture is about this convey topograph, and let me now explain what it is, right? So, um, so this is the idea. I mean, it's, um, that's how he started the first lecture, integer lattice point and lex vector. Lex vector is vector up to sine plus minus V. And this is actually, it's natural. If you consider, for example, normal to the hyperplane, then it's not a vector, it's lex vector, lex vector of course, if you, if you normalize it, right? plus minus. So it's, it's kind of natural object, uh, but the, the sec second thing is less natural. <coughs> it's super base. Super base is that instead of consider bases, he uh, uh, suggested to consider uh, super bases, namely three vectors, such that two of them are bases and the third one is minus a sum or plus sum if you want, because it's plus minus, it doesn't matter, right? So now, um, this, again, I learned it from geometers, and uh, uh, it's um, uh, Nikolai Petrovich Dalbilin, actually, who is one of the students of Delaunay School, and I learned about this sphere packing Korkin Zolotaryov uh, from him. And he said that Delaunay called, th this was known in this part of, of, of mathematics. And it's usually ascribed this idea of superbase, also not new, is, but lex combination of lex and super base is a kind of new. So uh, Delaunay used to call it uh, Kaluchka Zellinger, which means uh, Zelling's prequel, right? Because you have three vectors, and uh, usually it's re they refer in to three dimensional case when it's uh, mm, uh, right, uh, like a prequel indeed. Um, right. So anyway. So this is the main object, and then you, uh, if you have um, uh, this notion, then if you, every basis, it belongs to exactly two uh, uh, super bases, and they form, and therefore you have naturally form what is called convey topograph. Convey topograph is, is, um, is uh, so at e, uh, it's, uh, it's a binary, embedded binary plan, uh, 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 plane embedded binary tree, such that every vertex is super base, so it's labeling super base, every edge labeling basis, and uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 Complement these uh, domains are labeled by um, primitive vectors of lattice. Primitive means no common, um, uh, uh, not multiple of 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 other vectors, right? So. Of course, you may say that, and that's what he said, that uh, somehow this was known. And of course, you may say that this is a fairy tree. Well, nevertheless, it's, it's a kind of, uh, um, so this is a fairy tree, which Valia uh, explained actually uh, also um, uh, showed this. So this is, but um, of course, this is just, uh, uh, projectivization of the previous uh, picture. So uh, you just consider projective <coughs> line rather than uh, two dimensional, and that's and this is uh, this is what you see. And that's called fairy because uh, in order to produce. Uh, by the way, can you see my mouse? Can you see my mouse? 
yeah. Uh, so in order to produce next uh, fraction, you add simply uh, numerator, sorry. You add simply numerator and denominator. And of course, um, this is called ferry addition, but it's nothing else but adding uh, the vectors like it here in two dimensional space. So it's projectivization of the sound. That's what ferry uh, addition is. And this is, uh, again, that's why I can we say that, well, but anyway, uh, it's, um, uh, uh, let's call it convey topograph. It, uh, uh, it seems to be um, fair. Um, and uh, let me explain why, uh, how convey used it. He said that um, this is the uh, nice way to visualize uh, values of binary quadratic form. So you simply take uh, quadratic form, if you take quadratic form, then um, uh, on la it's well defined on lax vector. If you change x and y sign simultaneously, then uh, q doesn't change sign. So it's well defined. And therefore, you can simply take values of given q, uh, quadratic binary quadratic form, on the um, vectors. And then you will have uh, what he called topograph of binary quadratic form. Now, this topograph, it's important that it can be built uh, recursively because every quadratic form satisfies this arithmetic progression or parallelogram rule. Some of the squares of, of the sides of the parallelogram is equal to some of the squares of, of, um, uh, of the diagonal, right? I mean, this is, this is what it is. Left sign is sum of diagonal, and this is, and um, this is essentially uh, defining a quadratic form. If you add some homogeneity, then, then it, is, uh, it's, it is just this. So, so the form, uh, and it's also a nice uh, way uh, because you have three coefficients, A, H, and B, right? And it's, I'm using notation of Conway. I mean, so um, then, um, uh, uh, you have three numbers, and they at, uh, and these three numbers uh, populate um, uh, three regions coming uh, in, at, uh, at, uh, at at the vertex here, for example, or here, and then you can uh, uh, then you can uh, do this. Uh, mm, then you can compute recursively uh, next, and then you can continue, right? And uh, important lemma, <coughs> which is um, which uh, shows that uh, um, actually this is indeed tree. It has no loop. It's called convey clumping lemma. That num these numbers will, if you have a, b, and h are positive, for example, then they will grow forever. They will. It's clumping lemma, and that's clear from what is written here. H. When I'm writing h at a, at at the edge. This is actually coefficient h in, in the middle coefficient in, in quadratic form, or uh, it's uh, what is the difference of, of this arithmetic progression. So this is the thing. And then he said that, look, uh, now you can visualize um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the values of uh, quadratic form. For example, if you take um, uh, x, which numbers can be represented as a sum of two squares? That's a classical question, Gauss. And the, the answer, Gauss, asks, uh, Gauss answer is, is very beautiful. You know, you have um, uh, prime divisor should be of the form 4k plus one. And uh, well, I mean, this is, uh, uh, and uh, you can, compute um, uh, the number of representation of this. And this is, this is a very famous classical um, uh, subject of uh, elementary number theory. Now, what, uh, what uh, uh, Kohn's, uh, sorry, uh, Conway suggested is, is very, very different. I mean, he said that I don't need it. I will simply start it with, uh, so this is value at one, one, and this is value at one, one. Uh, at, at uh, two bit. And then I start to build it using uh, uh, recursion. Two plus one is uh, three, six minus one, five, and then I can build this. I don't need even formula for the quadratic form. I can build the whole tree, um, populate the whole tree using, using this. And uh, if I want, for example, to know all the values up to million, then I can stop when, because of climbing lemma, 
I even, but it's not not just even that naive because there is there is uh, uh, many things you can see on the con convey topograph. So um, I put it. Uh, so it's interesting that if you take x square plus y square, it's the same numbers. I mean, these Fibonacci numbers will appear again and again here in in this story. It's interesting that it it's here. You see one, two, five, thirteen, thirty four. Uh, 89 this is every second Fibonacci here Fibonacci and this is Fibonacci will be everywhere magic mm, but this is of course because I have chosen not uh, arbitrary now this is a, another invention it's beautiful really um, uh, so this is convey river so he said he let's consider a binary quadratic form so uh, binary uh, quadratic form which is uh, which is, as, as Convey say, not representing zero. It means that you, we can see the values only at non-zero vectors. And then uh, if, uh, if uh, um, <coughs> for, for generic, uh, um, if discriminant of, of the corresponding quadratic um, uh, equation is not total square, then, then uh, uh, they're not representing zero. And, uh, and then you don't have zero, and then you have either positive or negative. And he said that positive and negative value of quadratic form are separated by the river, and this river must be periodic. That's obvious, more or less. By the way, this is what geometry is, because it's a, uh, it's a path, and then, and then um, you have some uh, uh, um, uh, estimates from, from above, which means that they will be... Uh, eventually periodic this can vary period and this is nothing it's a, it's a probably the most uh, vivid proof of Lagrange uh, uh, classical result that every quadratic rational has periodic continued fraction and this is actually period of this continued fraction but um, but let me uh, not go into this so it's it is really beautiful now um, so let me talk a little bit uh, about Markov um, uh, now. Uh, so what Markov? So what I'm going to say now is not quite what is written in Markov because Markov uh, was can see, can see, he was talking about binary quadratic form, right? And uh, what he is maximizing is uh, is a minimal value of quadratic form divided by discriminant which is uh, indefinite analog of density of sphere packing. If you consider positive definite quadratic form, then what uh, Markov um, uh, considered was exactly density, how much space this uh, circle uh, uh, take uh, located at the lattice uh, of maximal um, uh, radius uh, equal, uh, uh, how much uh, area they occupy. So if you write it down, then replace positive definite quadratic form by indefinite quadratic form, then geometry disappear because it's not, it's not, uh, there is no area anymore, but you can take modulus of the value and then you have some positive number. And this is what actually Markov considered. Now, I think it was Hurwitz. Uh, after Hurwitz, uh, he stated that, he reformulated this as, uh, as a Diophantine um, analysis. So if you have real number, then you can consider that every number can be approximated up to one over Q squared. Mm, that follows from continued fraction expansion. Now, what's about this constant? Let's do uh, this, this uh, constant C. It, you can always take one. Can you take smaller? And the smallest one is, uh, is uh, called uh, Markov constant. And you can write down this um, in terms of uh, continued fraction expansion as lim soup of this sum, right? You have tail and then uh, the pre, um, pre, uh, uh, um, the, the beginning written in a different form. Now the set, and then you can ask the following uh, question. What, uh, I, uh, what are this, what is the set of the all possible values? You can, you can call it Markov or people, some people call Lagrange. What I'm a bit annoyed that there are no usually references. I don't know, I think it's, well, I don't know. I'm not sure if Lagrange considered this. But anyway, the terminology is the following. If you're asking about all real numbers, 
then it's Lagrange spectrum. If you're talking about um, top uh, of, of, of Lagrange spectrum, then it's Markov spectrum. And why it is? Because Markov considered um, only the numbers when uh, the, this mu is uh, larger than one thought. And uh, mu, you can view this as a measure of irrationality, of course. It's how badly, how, 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 uh, how badly it can be approximated. And this is the list, and this is the list, and this is top five. The top, of course, is the golden ratio that everybody knows, the second silver ratio, but the bronze ratio is, uh, you, you, you probably never seen unless you're familiar with this subject. And this is, uh, you, you should be, if you've never seen it, then it's, uh, it's a puzzle. For example, root of three is, uh, is not even, it's much below. It's, it's very rational compared to the numbers. Uh, written here, and it's not even in, in Markov spectrum. But, but Sasha, these uh, these alpha are defined up to SL2Z also, right? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Right. It's a, it's everything depends on the on the tail because this uh, uh, um, uh, right. That's that's correct. Um, um, uh, uh, sorry, wh why did you say this? No, no, just the, the alpha is not unique within it. No, that's correct. That, absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about SL to Z uh, or, uh, up to equivalence up to SL to Z, which is the same as uh, some numbers are equivalent if, if they have the same tail in continued fraction expansion. Mm -hmm. And this is the same as GL to Z actually equivalent. Yeah, yeah. GL mm -hmm. to Z, right, right, right. That's absolutely true, of course. And this is um, important. Okay, so now um, that was the question. And question, as I said, in a, in a different form, came from Korkin and Zolotaryov, and they view this as kind of strange, in, indefinite um, um, analog of sphere dancing, the uh, circle dancing, uh, uh, Pekin, dance circle. Okay. But uh, what Markov did was, uh, was uh, amazing. I mean, it's, um, so he proved, uh, he considered this, uh, it's actually two, uh, um, uh, it's about 50 pages long, uh, a paper full of continued fraction. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, one half is, uh, is about this continued fraction, uh, and then the second part is, is uh, this uh, uh, Markov equation. And um, uh, remarkable, so this is Diophantine equation. So we can see the solution in positive integer solution we're interested in. So one, one, one is obvious solution, but you can, because it's quadratic equation in Z, for example, if you know X and Y, then, um, um, and one Z, then you know the second solution by V and that's to uh, some of the roots of three x y. So this is vieta involution because it's quadratic. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's double cover of all um, coordinate plane. And therefore you have the involution uh, switching the uh, um, branches, which is explicitly given by, by this. And what Markov uh, proved and that's actually, I, when I will talk about Mardell, for example, it's, it's not true if you change here plus constant. Uh, this is a remarkable property that you have one seed, one, 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 and then all solution, all integer solution come from one seed, it's from one, 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 by applying permutation, of course, obvious, and, and, and uh, uh, Markov or Vieta involution, right? As a result, you will have this Markov orbit, consisting of triples, right? And uh, every element of triple called Markov number. And these Markov numbers are one, two, five, this is written here, and that's uh, up to all up to thousand. They grow uh, quite uh, quickly. There are some um, familiar numbers because um, uh, there are these uh, one, five, uh, 13, 34, 89 which is, uh, of course, uh, Fibonacci, but there are many more. Or even Fibonacci numbers are here, but uh, there are many more, and this is a remarkable list of numbers. And if you have um, 
if you know triple x, y, z, then you can write down explicitly the most irrational number alpha corresponding to triple given by this formula. For example, if you know one, 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 then it's one plus one minus three half, it's one half, and this is root five over two, golden ratio. So this is the thing. And this is, uh, and because the second, the third number is five, nine times five square, it's 225 minus four, 221. That's what appeared in bronze, in bronze um, uh, ratio, right? Now there is uh, actually unicity conjecture sometimes attributed to Markov. It's not Markov, it was Frobenius in 1913 um, uh, who studied Markov numbers. I mean, he was one of the first to appreciate probably fully um, what uh, Markov um, did. And, uh, and uh, he um, uh, put, put forward the conjecture, which is still open. Uh, that actually, um, so this is the only essentially up to uh, equivalence, the only uh, number with this uh, Markov um, constant, the only number. And so Markov spectrum is simple. Above Markov spectrum is, uh, so that's why probably it's, it's better to use Lagrange uh, spectrum for the whole thing. And uh, Markov is above top of the Lagrange uh, thing. So roughly speaking, above one thought, the situation is integrable in some sense. You can find basically all the number as, as effective as, as, as uh, you can um, uh, with and describe- when you say the word, I'm sorry, when you say integrable, what do you mean? Integrable. Well, I mean, you, we, the, the thing is that we can describe the spectrum. It's discrete spectrum and here is mu. Mu is m divided by nine m square minus four, where m is Markov number, right? Now Markov, you're absolutely right. There is no formula for Markov number, right? You can find this mar these numbers only as Conway suggested, right? You 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 start uh, with one one one, and then you apply this, and and we are going to use Conway topography, of course, right? I mean, it's, uh, this. So this spectrum is uh, conjecturally simple. So that's completely describe uh, uh, the spectrum above one thought. Below one thought, it's still uh, largely unknown. There are gaps. There is a continued uh, spectrum of below Freiman number uh, up to zero. But uh, I think uh, largely uh, it's not, it's not uh, very well understood. That's how difficult the question is actually. Right? The spectrum of real numbers are not known. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, what is the spectrum? What is the definition? Spectrum is a set of all Markov constants. Mm. Okay, so w whether we, um, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, there, there is no probably uh, operator with such uh, thing, but uh, you, you never know. Um, anyway. So uh, we, uh, what is the set of all possible Markov uh, constants? That's the question. Uh, answer, above one thought, it's discrete, it's conjecturally simple, and it's given by explicit formula, m divided by nine m squared minus four, Markov formula. It's, it's a kind of, in, in that sense, it is described, right? Now the question is, what are m's, right? What are these Markov numbers, okay? So uh, yeah, that's growth. Um, so this is uh, one of the first, I think, uh, um, result in this direction, although I'm not sure if it is uh, completely um, fully proved. Um, uh, it was Don Zagir investigation, and I will talk about this, who studied the uh, um, growth of Markov numbers as a function of n. Uh, so you basically put them on the line, order them, and then you're asking what is the nth, nth uh, um, um, uh, uh, Markov number. But uh, to me, this is not natural somehow because, you know, first of all, you, so you, you better look at this at the, at the um, tree. Now, <coughs> it's interesting that Zagir, has this tree and uh, people in uh, doing the 
but they, their tree is not the same. They have triples. Uh, they're not. Their tree is not planary. In the, is not convey topograph, and that's why um, this question was possible only on convey topograph. So what's the idea? The idea is that you start with one, 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 right? I mean, and, and I drawn only. So the the mark of three uh, mark of three is is uh, is uh, symmetric. So it's branch of I cut uh, repetition. So that's why my first triple is one two five. As uh, so there are two triples one 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 and one one two, where you have repetition. They call singular. So I drop them, uh, the, uh, but they are of course present at the, at the at the total three. But this is a um, so it's branch of this. So one, two, five, and then you started doing the following three times product this, which is 30 minus one, 29 and so on. And then you continue and you build this. And then in this way, you will see all the Markov numbers and, um, mm, but they're not ordered, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, this is the thing, but, but nevertheless, they naturally live in, in this uh, convey topograph or let's say, uh, mark of three. Mark of three is actually a uh, convey topograph populated by um, uh, mark of numbers. Now, I don't know. I learned that I think maybe Leonie Chekhov told me or Valodia Fogg, but long ago people used who I don't know who was the first because between Zagir, Zagir used a wrong, uh, um, um, well, not wrong, but his, for his purpose it was absolutely fine. Uh, but he has used different, let me put it, tree, right? So um, here the tree populated, uh, this is important that this tree is embedded in the plane or how people in, uh, in uh, how Leonia told me it should be called fat tree or uh, um, so this is um, uh, the fact that it's fat tree is very, very important, right? And I don't know, um, maybe Leonia, uh, or Misha can tell you can tell me uh, whether whether it was before, uh, but anyway, uh, somebody probably uh, between Zagir who using different tree and fork realized that um, uh, um, uh, th this is the best way and uh, and uh, but but I don't think that. Um, uh, um, uh, so it's definitely in Valodia Fork 1997 um, paper, you know, preprint, uh, but uh, I, I don't know, maybe it was known before. So anyway, once you use uh, convey topograph here, then uh, we can ask uh, what's the growth along the path. We choose the path and then we, rather than asking the growth of this, by the way, the gear question, I should say, of course, it's very natural. It's very natural. Because if you're interested in the spectrum, then it it is it is uh, it is what you have to ask. But if you're using uh, in in if you are kind of geometrically inspired, then you're using convey topograph. Now about this convey topograph, maybe I should say again. I mean, it's um, I missed this, but uh, but if we go, let me see, um, where is it? Uh, this is uh, this is convey topograph. It's binary tree, of course. So this is actually actually um, uh, can be viewed as uh, um, as a uh, um, discrete version of upper half plane, because here. So what is upper half plane? It's uh, you you have uh, uh, the group is SL two R. The SL two R is group of motion, and uh, the group of sym the symmetry group of this. Uh, binary tree, you remember that it's planar, so you have cyclic order, is actually, it's actually PSL to Z. PSL to Z, um, because PSL to Z is, is a free product of Z2, which is a rotation by pi around the middle of this, and uh, Z3, which is a cyclic rotation of this, right? So, um, and the four, it's, it's, and it's nicely uh, explained in, 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 in Conway, I should say. That's why Conway actually explained, he didn't say this, but it's, that's a, the idea. Conway topograph, or this binary tree is essentially discrete. If you replace SL2R by SL2Z, then what you should get? 
right? And, uh, and then you have, so the whole thing is uh, basically kind of discrete hyperbolic geometry, if you want, but very special one. Um, anyway, so, <clears throat> so this, is, this is the question uh, we asked, um, and um, um, uh, let me explain actually the idea, which is already in Don Zagir paper. He said that uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, Markov equation is too complicated. Let's consider, modi let's modify it. Let's add here small number four nines and, um, and uh, it shouldn't spoil uh, too much uh, the gross question. And, uh, but this will be much, much better uh, because you can, um, uh, you can um, uh, solve this in a way. And, uh, but this observation actually, another part of mathematics was done by Mardell. So what Mardell considered, Mardell has different motivation. He said that there is a remarkable Markov equation. Let's add something here. Now, actually he considered x, well, he instead of three, he has one. And here is four in his normalization. So everything is integer if you rescale properly. Mm -hmm. and anyway, and then you have, uh, you can parameterize uh, solution explicitly, right? And this is, uh, this is the thing. And this is, um, um, this is what, uh, uh, what Don Sagir used, because then you replace uh, this Markov equation uh, by much simpler Euclid equation, A plus B is C, right? So let me say a little bit about this, this game. I love this uh, game between, you know, tropicalization, dequantization and quantization, and then going, it's, it's quite interesting. So, so A plus B C was known, mm, I, I don't know, probably it was con 50s. I mean, this relation, Mardell is definitely 50s. So this in the 50s, they, people already knew this kind of thing, right? And, um, and used for, for different, uh, uh, this parameterization is, uh, now, tropicalization, dequantization, it's, um, uh, it's, it's a terminology, I mean, it's, I think it was approximately at the same time, I, mean, I don't know, Imre Simon, um, who uh, is, I think, Brazilian um, computer scientist, mathematician, and uh, Viktor Pavlovich Maslov, uh, they both thinking in the same direction, and um, because of Brazilian uh, 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 the origin, actually he is Hungarian, I think, by, by birth. But so it's bizarre. People call it tropical. Well, that that's complete bizarre. Now, Maslow chosen a proper name in the <laughs> important analysis. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Right? Tropical uh, mathematics, in spite of bizarre <laughs> name, survived, <laughs> and everybody happy with this. But the important analysis, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that people <laughs> much in use. Right? I mean, this is the thing. now. What was the idea? But the idea they they have different. Uh, I, I should say motivation. Maslow idea was. Basic, it's 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 a kind of strange idea. If, if the first thing uh, you say that real analysis is actually already quantized, right? It's already quantized. We our real numbers are already quantum, right? Let's dequantize them. So let's write them down as e to the a by h h Planck constant, and then let h go to zero, right? Let's consider the classical limit of it. And if you do this for this uh, uh, equation, then you, you, and if you assume that x is, uh, x and y, are, z is maximum, then in this, to, in this uh, you will have uh, e to the c divided by, 2c divided by h, right, maximum. And then you balance here. And here you have a plus b plus c. So you have a plus b plus c equal to c, or a plus b equal to c. So this is a classical version of the quantum <laughs> Markov equation. So this, this, uh, um, and uh, this is Euclid because this is Euclidean algorithm, but in kind of slow way. If you have, if you have numbers a um, um, and c, then you you uh, subtract. Uh, 
uh, C from A, and then and, and then you continue. So this is a this is a, um, a Euclidean al algorithm. Um, okay. So just uh, maybe I, I should mention this that um, I think it's uh, I first. Uh, uh, so the origin in uh, of tropical geometry, I think it's I first heard from Alec Viro long ago. Um, so he has this real algebraic uh, geometry on logarithmic paper, um, and then which is which is a kind of I mentioned this because it's also uh, like Maslow uh, like approach. While classical tropical geometry is uh, is uh, um, is uh, um, uh, is different actually it's, so uh, i think uh, and this is what i'd like to use uh, the no the, the notion of tropic tropical uh, tropicalization is not well defined i'd like to use it right uh, irresponsibly uh, Yes, and uh, Japanese call it usually this process uh, ultra discretization, and uh, this is the way uh, how you can get uh, cellular automata. And I think it was first um, in the example of um, uh, ultra discrete Carter de Vries equation, which is box ball system, was shown by Takahashi and Satsuma in the beginning of 90s, but this is now very well developed in Japanese school, right? So this is, uh, but you can view this ultra discretization as de dequantization, right? So you, it's a bizarre point of view, we live in quantum, already real world, let's dequantize it, okay? So this is, um, this is, and I'd important is because A plus, yes, you replace it max plus, um, max plus uh, um, algebra, and uh, because it's max, A plus A equal to A. That's why it's an important call. Uh, but as I said, it's not very much. Sa Sasha, just a quick comment about yep. the Markov tree. Yes. Uh, so the Markov tree, there is a picture in the Castles book of 1957. Uh, we, which tree? The exactly. Diophantine it's approximation book of Castles from 1957. Exactly this, exactly this. Well, he draws the tree. He doesn't draw, he doesn't draw the numbers in the regions. That's the main thing. That's the yeah, main I mean, that, that's, the, that's the thing. He draws the... That's, the, that's, that's a big difference. Because yeah, this, tree, difference. Yeah. this tree, corn used, I think, and, uh, and well, I'm not sure. Anyway, anyway, this is a big difference. Because if you look at uh, what, for example, Don Zagir, he also, mm -hmm. uh, I think, used two trees, Euclid and this. And then uh, I, I think it's, you can see that it swapped sometimes, right? Because he didn't embed it, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's not uh, the same uh, tree, right? And nobody said, of course, that it must be the same, but uh, I think conceptually it's very different. One binary tree is just binary tree, and another one is a plain embedded different symmetry. For example, trees, in a sense, in a ser sense, right? They have huge uh, group of symmetry, in, enormous. You know, binary tree, usual binary tree, uh, if you consider the full group of symmetries, it's huge. While here, it's, it's much, it's, uh, it's PSL to that. Anyway, so it's just a, a huge difference to me between plainly embedded and that thing. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I should well, check because I have- His picture is embedded in the plane and he, he roots he puts the root is one 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 and one one two. Right, right, right. No, I saw this. Picture. I, I saw this picture in um, in. Покажи. Только она будет ровная, но совсем будет плотно, что такое? In uh, um, uh, in uh, uh, I forgot maybe. Anyway, anyway. Let's, anyway, let's, sorry. Uh, let me have. I I haven't seen Castle's book to be honest. No. Okay. Um, right, I mean, this is the thing, and that's, uh, that's, uh, this is uh, important because we can, uh, we have correspondence. Here, the three, the rule is very simple. Here is the sum, two plus three, five, five plus three, eight, and so on. Here is uh, Markov, mm -hmm. and here is Ferry. Okay, it's just, 
uh, and here we have correspondence. Therefore, therefore, we can label all Markov numbers by fair refraction, or which is, you remember that this is just projective version of convey Lux vector, right? Lux vector uh, label. So therefore, Markov numbers, uh, naturally, I mean, uh, uh, Zagir is using labeling them by natural numbers, uh, ordering them in, in, uh, in, in the real life, right? So it's fine, it's natural. It's natural from spectrum point of view. But from this point of view, it's more natural to label them by fair refraction. So one, for example, is M of zero and two is M of one half and so on, right? Just this correspondence give you the simplest uh, parameterization, okay? So that's what we uh, considered with, with uh, uh, Katie. We considered this, uh, 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 how they grow on the tree, on the convey tree. And this, is, uh, this was kind of natural question. They grow as hell, so we have to take double logarithm to, 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 to get something um, uh, sensible and we had to um, take limb soup in order to uh, be defined everywhere and uh, 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 this is um, and uh, then the claim is that you can use you can use Markov tree you can use CN is uh, just uh, maximal a, a plus B equal to C it's Euclid tree it's it's the same or if you are on um, on a ferry tree, that's important. Okay, <coughs> let's look at the edge here. You have one half at the at, at the left and one third in the in the in the right, and we can put it as a as a matrix one one two three, and this is matrix from SL two, as we say, SL two n. SL two n is monoid. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, integer matrices with non-negative uh, uh, entries with determinant one non-negative. So you cannot take inverse. And uh, this is a nice parameter. It's only part of this here. But if you consider uh, you you this is this is a, uh, a fairy tree gives you a parameterization of SL two n n is natural numbers monoid. Right, I mean, let's say this is this half branch, this branch, and um, then you can take um, uh, so on every edge, on every edge you have a matrix uh, S from a cell to uh, Z, even positive in this case. It's uh, uh, with um, and then you take spectral radius. Spectral radius is maximal eigenvalue, maximum modulus eigenvalue, uh, maximal uh, modulus eigenvalue. Right. And then you take logarithm divided by n. And these are all the same. You can use any of them. You can use ferry, and then you better take uh, this uh, spectral radius. And then uh, C, and here M is, uh, is, is uh, uh, Markov numbers, Euclid, and so on. So this is a simple part. This is a so this la Sorry, Sasha, this lambda then is a function of the path, gamma. Uh, but the path is unique. Right. right. I mean, you you go. Okay, you're taking X. the path with maximal maximal. No, no. You you go to x. Right, right, right. I for maybe I should explain indeed. What is x here? So you have um, uh, paths are labeled by uh, uh, numbers. So this this discrete. Uh, right, right, right. Let me maybe here. Here is fine. So this discrete um, uh, hyperbolic plane. Right, and let's view this uh, graph as as discrete version of of hyperbolic plane, right? And um, it has it it has the same absolute as normal hyperbolic plane. Namely, it's it's just circle, it's just circle, right? And um, basically, you this is you go there is a limit here, and uh, you can uh, there is only one path going to any irrational. Uh, number and two paths exactly two paths go into rational number because you can go either here uh, two one thought is either right 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 forever 
or here, left, 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 whatever, you come to the same point, right? You have, you have two uh, paths coming to, to, to the same uh, uh, rational point. So, uh, so uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, I have to choose, I have to choose path, this path, and it's uh, for your rational, for example, number. For rational number, it will be zero. Um, so it doesn't matter, uh, but for irrational number, there is only one path, and then that's what you consider. That's what you consider, one path, and this is unique. Now, I should say that um, there was a very important work by uh, Serge Kantar uh, and uh, Larey uh, and uh, Iwasaki, uh, who studied uh, this SL2Z dynamics on uh, Markov surface, on proper Mar Markov surface, complex or real, and they have shown that topological entropy is, uh, is uh, given by a uh, logarith uh, logarithm of uh, spectral radius. So somehow this is uh, uh, what we study, therefore, we can module the result, we study average of topological entropy along the path. So every, every edge is an uh, element of SL to Z, it's acting, as a, um, uh, we have dynamical system, it defined the for dynamical system by iteration, and you ask in what is topological entropy, and then you take average along the along the um, path. That's the same. I mean, that's but it's just just interpretation. Now, um, so let's uh, come back to uh, convey and. Um, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, let's consider the growth of uh, values of quadratic form on, on, uh, on convey topography. And then, so this is a definition. You, you have three numbers at every vertex. You choose maximal of them. And then you, you take logarithm of modulus, uh, maximum modulus, and then divide by n. And then the, the result is, um, the following. So if you if you have Q, then then um, it's almost always uh, lambda twice a lambda function which we considered, except so uh, this um, Q if it's indefinite, right? For indefinite form, of course, we consider let's consider indefinite form. For definite form, it will be always two lambda. But for indefinite form, the answer is interesting because there are two exceptional points and it's exactly convey river, right? That's only two exceptional paths. So there is this convey river, which is blue here, and you can go, uh, you can go to the river and then you can go left to one of the routes or right to the second route. And uh, in, if you go this way, then naturally um, the, um, the growth will be zero, right? The growth will be zero. Uh, well, it should not be in, in uh, lambda psi is, is a rational number, so it's not, it's positive. But uh, uh, Conray River is the only exception, right? I mean, so this is kind of nice, nice uh, uh, appearance of Conway River in this question. So now uh, the main question is what about these properties? So this is where, um, um, Uh, where I should uh, I should be a little bit uh, skip. So first of all, what's what's about this lambda of x? I would like to say that this is a real modular function, real. But uh, actually, when I discussed it with Peter Sarnak, he objected. Right? He said, no, no, no. Don't say. Don't call anything a modular if it doesn't have any analytic properties. Indeed, uh, this lambda of x is very peculiar function. It's defined only on, a re on absolute, on a real one, but it's gel to z invariant. But of course it cannot be, it's, it's quite bizarre. It's zero almost everywhere, but house dormant dimension of its support is one. Actually, Michael Magi uh, ex explained this uh, um, to us. Uh, this follows from Yarnik. Uh, results. Um, anyway, so moreover, in spite of being almost everywhere, Hausdorff dimension is one, and actually Lipunov spectrum feel um, the, the the all possible values of lambda of x feel everything um, between zero and logarithm of phi. Phi is golden ratio, 
And then um, the, the, the final thing is, uh, what can you ask if you have no analyticity, you have, where is the regularity? I mean, why it's nice? Well, uh, this is what the best we, can, we could find is that restriction of uh, lambda on uh, Markov Hurwitz, as we said, because it, it was Hurwitz who translated Markov into De Fontaine analysis language. So this, this uh, uh, most irrational numbers we called Markov Hurwitz, uh, or sometimes they called Markov irrationality. Um, uh, and if you restrict lambda on this set, well, I mean, they up to equivalence, so it doesn't matter. As, uh, uh, so then it will be, the, the, the lambda will be monotonically increasing from, and in ferry parameterization, this is a convex function. Now, um, we have other sets. We constructed also other sets with a similar property, the quadratic irrational, and lambda on, mm, well, in many, infinitely many actually, such, such subsets on which uh, um, lambda behaves similarly, monotonically increasing and uh, uh, kind of this kind of um, Now, the proof is based on um, a quite beautiful piece of uh, um, work coming back to free care, um, Garshkov, Kohn, 50s, and uh, Volodya Fok, we used his, his formula. So I, ha I think I have to uh, be uh, quick. So, um, so there is this uniformization theorem that every conformal class of surface metric has a complete constant curvature representative, right? So if you take torus, then of course uh, on torus you have flat metric, uh, zero curvature metric, and you have some parameters, something. But uh, if you if you make a puncture, then uh, the metric is no more no longer complete. So you have to introduce actually negative curvature metric, right? In order to be consistent. And this is, uh, uh, if you consider not, if you take not arbitrary torus, but torus with 60 degrees, rhombus type, uh, symmetric with symmetry, uh, pl uh, with, with, with uh, flat uh, metric like this, right? But when you make a puncture, there is only, there is a canonical, unique uh, uh, hyperbolic structure. And in this structure, you can take uh, lengths of simple geodesics and, uh, and uh, uh, Markov numbers are related to them by this formula, okay? So this was a PhD thesis of Garshkov, who was, uh, which was not published, unfortunately. And, um, and the four, uh, but uh, Kohn uh, independently quite, from quite different perspective, uh, I will talk about Kohn later, uh, also discovered this fact, and uh, this is a kind of beautiful piece of, uh, between um, number theory and uh, hyperbolic geometry. Right? And uh, this is how to prove this. Maybe I should say this. So this is identity, free key identity. So if you consider AB and C equal to AB, Okay, C equal to AB. Then uh, they satisfy, uh, traces satisfy this identity where trace here is commutator, commutator. Now, <clears throat> if you think of A and B as generator of fundamental group of, uh, of this punctured torus, which is free now, um, and uh, then, um, uh, then uh, um, uh, the condition of puncture is uh, means that trace should be, uh, sorry, comm commutator should be parabolic, uh, and that means the trace should be minus two, actually not two, but minus two for some reason, but that's uh, general. And then you have cancellation here. So you have a real matrix, Markov equation, and this is Teichmuller space of one function tori, and this is essentially Friedkin and Klein, but Linda Keen, and uh, so it was studied uh, in, in detail, now very well understood, although there are some questions there, but this is the first example of Teichmuller, explicit Teichmuller description. Now Markov orbit is one point, and it corresponds to this punctured and harmonic torus, okay? So this is a quantization, look at that. So we just dequantize um, uh, Markov equation and we had A plus B equal to C. 
So then we actually called it for a while uh, quantum Euclid tree, and then we found <laughs> Kohn. Uh, uh, this is essentially what Kohn did, right? So uh, let's consider, um, replace this by A, B, C, right? So this is a quantization because you uh, replace commuting A and B by um, matrices, but you have to start with something, right? And, and Kohn suggested to start with two, as we say, cat map matrices, which are not favorites. One, 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 two, and another one should be here, but if I would put one here, it's two, one, one, one. Um, uh, if you start with these two, and then you construct this, using this formula, which is quantization of Euclid, so it's quantum Euclid, but it's actually cone, right? Then you will have this. And, and so what we did, we, we, had, we had this Markov equation. We uh, first dequantize it. We have A plus B equal to C. Then we quantize it, right? And we have something completely different, not quite. If you take trace, uh, and one sort of trace, then you have exactly this. So one plus two divided by three is one. Uh, seven plus five, five, and so on. So it's actually, there is, a, so it's full circle. Uh, quantization, dequantization, trace. I mean, they, they form kind of, uh, and then you are in circle. So the, the work of Korn is really beautiful. It contains a lot of things, and this is related to group theory also deeply. It's, it's quite a lot of, so. Now, Korn matrices, what's the meaning? Why it's one, 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 two? Well, they're generators of commutator of SL to Z. So this uh, Fuchsian group corresponding to Markov torus is actually commutator of SL to Z, okay? So this is explicit parameterization of, of, of this, and this is geometric um, explanation of all this magic is, is, is just, uh, well, I mean, you can check, but uh, um, I think it's quite nice deep result. Now, let me just, uh, I want to say what we, how we prove it. So this is what Valodia Fork introduced, right? And I always like this formula, except this one over Q. One over Q, I couldn't understand how can it be, because it, this is what, uh, this is what uh, um, made the difference with our, what we want. So it's one over Q, and then, uh, so then, um, so what, uh, 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 so we, uh, psi, so what is, M of PQ, remember that's fairy. Uh, this is corresponding Markov. So uh, uh, five is M of one thought, right? Um, so this is uh, uh, psi of PQ is this. And then uh, the, the observation of Valodia Fork is that this psi is actually, defined on rational, on rational numbers, but it can be extended to continuous convex function. And this is a beautiful, another example of beautiful, but much more regular special real function, right? I mean, it's, so we like lambda, but this is much, much regular, but still uh, amazing because it's differentiable at all irrational and not differentiable at any rational. So it's a kind of quite peculiar, um, uh, uh, fun uh, uh, function, and uh, this is essentially McShane and Vivian, but with, with Alfonso Sorrentino, we uh, explain how one can derive it using, um, uh, this is, uh, what is it, um Federer stable norm. So, S Sasha, how do you extend it to other real numbers? Do you take continued fraction or something? No. That's the thing. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know how to do this. It's uh, you. Um, so stable norm is is. Uh, 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 this is the theory of stable norm. That's only. Let me explain one thing. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, I'm imagining it. Could, I mean. Uh, let me explain. Uh, let me explain yeah, the proof. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you will see how it is done. Okay. Uh, convexity is the key thing because if it's convex, then it's continuous, right? I mean, it's uh, how why it's convex <laughs> because of this. Remember that this is just length. So this uh, uh, convexity follows, as Valodia Falk explained to me nicely. So if you take two paths on the torus, it's punctured torus, but that's okay. 
So you have I, A, and B, and you, you, take, um, uh, you take shortest geodesics in every class in A and shortest geodesics in B and takes lengths of them. Then the shortest geodesics in A plus B is uh, less or equal than A plus B because you can go around A and then go around B and this is, so it's purely geometric. That's why I think it's impossible to, to prove it's uh, using, well, I mean, not, not impossible. I don't, I, it may be hard to uh, derive it using uh, number theory. Because it's, you, you, you understand what is the argument. The argument is that it's, it's uh, if you go around alpha and then around beta, then, then maybe you can do shorter in A plus beta, right? I mean, it's, uh, so this is a convexity and that follows, but uh, differentiability is more subtle and this is uh, some Bungert result we have used. Anyway, so how it is related now to our question? As I said, one over Q is, uh, is um, preventing to link this function with, with, uh, with our lambda. Well, for Markov irrationality, we can do this. Namely, if you take lambda and X of uh, PQ is Markov irrationality, it's most irrational number corresponding to this, right? And lambda is well defined on this. It's just half of fork function, right? And that's, that's, uh, that's the last bit. And that's uh, Minkowski question mark function. Andy actually helped me. I was looking for this because we discovered this function ourselves with Katie. And then I said that, well, it must be known somewhere, but how we can find. And then I was fortunate to meet Andy. And then he said that, well, I've seen something like this. I said, what's the key word? He said, Minkowski. <laughs> Look at that. It's exactly what we need. It's very natural, but maybe it's, it's, a, it's, it's another beautiful function, uh, which is also continuous. And this is homeomorphism, zero, one, two, zero. Basically, you have two things. You have two, you have binary description. If you go along the, con uh, um, along the um, uh, convey topograph, then you can label path either by continued fraction, essentially like uh, fading, or you label left, right, left as binary, right? And conjugation between these two descriptions is question mark function, Minkowski question mark function. So this is binary, for example, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is continued fraction. One, two means one, one. And this is, of course, golden ratio. Two, two is, of course, uh, silver ratio. And this is bronze ratio and so on. And they are related and that's uh, the key observation is that um, uh, the, uh, is, uh, is uh, if you go uh, along fairy tree uh, to the uh, corresponding um, uh, number, which is either here, for example, binary left, right, left, right, right, left. Then you come exactly to the matrix, corresponding matrix from the cone tree. That's a, that's a, that's a beautiful thing, right. Um, tropicalization, uh, I have to, um, uh, Misha, if I, if I have how much time, because it's tropical, uh, let me be quick. There, there is next seminar soon, but people, if people want to leave, they can right, leave. Right, right, right. Uh, right, right, right. Let me, let me tell you that something, because what we call tropical, probably nobody else called tropical, right? But uh, so this is the thing. That's what I said. I would like to use freedom <laughs> to use language <laughs> irresponsibly. Look what we have done. So uh, this A plus B equal to C describe, let's consider this Kelly cubic. This is what... Uh, uh, Mardell used what um, it's instead of this is equivalent to to uh, Markov, but this is plus four now, and this is integrable case in the sense that it it it, it has this Cauch uh, uh, it's linearizable by Cauch transformation, right? Now uh, it, it's it's in, in algebraic geometry it's known as uh, um, uh, uh, Kelly. Um, uh, um, nodal uh, surface because it has four nodal maximal number cubic with maximal number of nodal singularities located at the vertices of regular tetrahedron. Uh, 
Now the middle, so when we uh, a plus b equal to c, describing this positive part, this large part, they, because it's exponential goes to, so, but uh, we, there is this uh, part which is kind of out of usual quantization because it's uh, some number, some negative, and this is what to do with this. Middle part, this middle part is called spectrohedron. Why it's called spectrohedron? Because it describes the form. Let's consider matrices, uh, symmetric matrices with, uh, on diagonal we have one, 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 so it's you, and then you have X, Y, Z in, um, uh, uh, of diagonal, but it's symmetric, right, X, Y, Z. Then this is a condition that determinant is uh, 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 zero. So it means that if you consider negative or uh, uh, inside, then you have kind of positive definite um, uh, matrices of this form. That's why it's called spectrohedron. Um, anyway, so A plus B equal to C, it means that you consider um, three uh, gram uh, matrix and X, Y, Z are cosine length one, uh, three um, vectors length one, and alpha, beta, gamma um, um, corresponding angles, A, B, C, sorry. And then A plus B equal to C means that they are flat. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a coplanar. Coplanar means that it, anyway, so this is a kind of, uh, so what that we want to, and then what we did with Seva Adler, so we asked ourselves natural question, let's, let's, it's natural, there is a natural tropical, this is a kind of smooth outside of vertices surface, nice algebraic surface, and we replaced this by regular tetrahedron, right, and then we looked at the dynamics, okay, <coughs> and, uh, and again, you see, it's uh, it's uh, the projection of this regular tetrahedron on every uh, coordinate plane in again two um, uh, two two points. So uh, there is uh, involution, tropical Vieta involution, so which you can write down explicitly. But um, and then you have tropical integral, which is maximum, and if you if you uh, fix this integral. So this is a game which Andy Horn also played actually uh, with, uh, in relation with uh, uh, Rod Halbert, uh, um, uh, Diafontaine um, uh, uh, in integrability. Um, anyway, so this is a picture what happens and it's clear that it's ergodic. It's now very different from this and then and that's what we, uh, yeah, the answer turned out to be very, very simple, is, of course. So we, this is, we simply, uh, this is tropical cosine, right? So this is just uh, my pi, tropical pi is one. And uh, this is uh, two periodic function and given by this. So that's quite, quite natural. And if you, and this is of course, tropical version of Mardell or Zagir or, parameterization of Kelly cubic, right? Uh, but instead of course, it's cosine here and tropical cosine. And uh, this is, uh, so if you consider this map, this map, uh, map torus to the surface of um, uh, tetrahedron. And this is semi-conjugation. Here you have usual cat map, for example, uh, on the torus. And here you have uh, our, um, uh, action of uh, of uh, um, uh, of uh, this uh, a on on uh, um, uh, tropical uh, action of SL to Z. Right? Anyway, so uh, let me maybe uh, say just a few words. So why it is important? Well, I mean that's uh, the most interesting discovery. Um, uh, after Korn was probably um, Markov triples in algebraic geometry. And first it was Rudakov, and that's Markov triple, an exceptional collection of uh, uh, vector bundles on P2. And then, and then this, is, this was uh, the most um, magic to me that, um, you know, the relation with quantum cohomology, which I learned actually from uh, uh, Boris Dubrovin, because uh, uh, 
uh, he uh, now maybe one one comment here uh, Boris has uh, uh, had remarkable um, uh, idea to classify all algebraic solution of P uh, Penleve six equation using um, um, as a finite orbits of braid group of braid group B3 but B3 uh, group uh, is closely related to SL2Z. And this is a magical thing which links this with topology because B3 is, um, is, has a center, Z. And if you take quotient by center, then you have uh, uh, PSL2Z. Um, so this is, uh, mm, uh, uh, it means that uh, if you have uh, action of SL2Z, you have action of also B3. And the, this is also why uh, Conway is important. If it is, if you have action of B3, you might want to use Conway as well. And um, this is what I again learned uh, from uh, uh, from Leonia, Valodia, Misha. Um, particularly, Misha explained to me how to describe <coughs> uh, Markov numbers, uh, Markov triples using cluster mutation and you consider simply uh, rank three triangular quiver with three uh, um, arrows and then uh, mm, this will be um, and then mutation will uh, generate all the triples just mutation of the quiver not not uh, cluster algebra um, mutation cluster algebra also related to this but this is a a2 i guess uh, or a one head uh, no. uh, no, it's, it's with two arrows of going round instead of three two, two arrows uh, yes 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 the same with two uh, arrows yes right, right cool. then, then you can see the cluster algebras which are which are this but uh, this is interesting again these two uh, that's what why confusion is sometimes markov quiver some people called i call for example markov triple with three arrows but uh, most people in cluster algebra, they, they think of uh, these two errors and they are completely different appearances of Markov. This is the magic of uh, this Markov numbers. So uh, let me just say a few words uh, about um, uh, Valle's talk, um, uh, which I was thinking, and it's beautiful. I mean, I, I've heard Valle uh, um, speaking about this, but uh, after his talk last week, I, I, I suddenly realized that, uh, I mean, uh, that this, his definition of Q-deformed real numbers is really beautiful, and this, this um, stabilization and stuff like this. So, um, what I thought is, um, uh, what I realized, actually, I did some calculation on the very, uh, <laughs> just just few uh, uh, hours ago. Anyway, so what convey topograph suggests is um, is the following new function. So you have this Q deformed uh, real number x, and you have um, uh, Taylor series, right? Then let's define the following not lambda. I, I thought mu, but anyway m uh, lim soup the same and log of uh, modulus uh, of uh, Taylor series divided by n. And this is of course uh, the same as logarithm of one over uh, uh, radius of convergence of series x cubed. Now it is natural from convey topograph point of view because, uh, well, actually it follows from what Sophie and Twala uh, explained nicely. Um, uh, it's this stabilization property. You remember this stabilization is a remarkable property. Another is, is conjecture is also seems to be related to the fact you remember that uh, the coefficient is, uh, what is it? Uh, unimodularity, I think. What, what is it? Uh, um, it means that the, uh, if, if the coefficient is one, then the product of roots modulus of roots is one, so you have uh, at least one of them less or equal than one, right? And that means that radius is um, smaller than one, radius of convergence. Anyway, I think it's an interesting problem and, and uh, 
to study the properties uh, of this function and it's different at least i mean i might make a mistake that's the only calculation which worked so far because i stuck with so this is for golden ratio right so remember that uh, this is uh, a golden ratio and for those who not what was not on uh, Wallace's talk last week so this is uh, he suggested they suggested with sophie the following um, generalization um, uh, of golden ratio which is a uh, formal series but in this case it's not just formal it's just taylor series of this function and when q equal to one you see you have golden ratio but uh, but it's uh, it's it's now uh, the thing now if you look at uh, radius of convergence then then the singularity is um, is um, is the minimal modulus of the root of, of, of this, right? Square root, and, and this is the minimal um, um, root modulus of the root here, which is um, minus three plus root five, but positive with the three minus root five half, right? That's the radius of convergence. And then it's, uh, so this is, uh, it, it gives, it produces a nice result. But for root two, to be honest, I, 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 I didn't have anything. I mean, I, I stuck because it's, um, it's um, um, uh, I think it is, uh, uh, it is quartic and I can't see uh, what uh, about there. But, uh, but this quartic is also has last coefficient one. Uh, so anyway. I think it's 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 probably a very interesting question to study. Basically, uh, in the, in this case, it's it's radius of convergence of uh, what Valla uh, explained to us. This is a convey suggest topograph suggest exactly this function, which is which is also a good indication maybe that it's reasonable. Okay, okay sorry. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I, I'm more than. <laughs> Thanks, Sasha, for great talk. So, fortunately, uh, I think quite a few people want to go to another seminar, but we probably have time for one short question. So, if, um, no, what short question? But one short uh, proposal. Sasha, Valia, and Sophie, we can talk because I also have some ideas about uh, you. We both these two talks. <laughs> great that sounds dangerous <laughs> no 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 it sounds great no 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 i i think both of you actually ah. nice inspiring talks ah. oh, thank you very much can you send me this slide yes 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 oh, okay okay let's thank sasha again and uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sasha. Great. Thank Thanks a lot, Sasha. That was great. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, then okay. I will uh, okay. you, turn you, you, it you. off. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs>